you know, it's it's clear that um, the people in power in this country don't have our best mm -hmm. interests in mind, and that it, it is up to us to really like try and build an alternative. And this demonstrates that pretty clearly on a lot of different levels. Unfortunately, so, but for us, it's just like we're more committed than ever to continue doing what we've been doing. And we're incredibly uh, privileged. We're in a pretty good spot right now. Um, definitely still an adjustment to be homeschooling and trying to work and just juggling all the pieces. Would you mind just telling me a little bit about how Whetstone began as a farm? As I was getting ready to graduate my last semester, I met some other students who were wanting to farm, but wanted to stay in the city. So we started an urban farm and we were farming right in the neighborhood where Klaus grew up. Um, so he and I met during that time and he was doing home repair construction kind of work for himself, but was really interested in our farm project and had been getting interested in farming and more kind of self-sufficiency and food production before he met me. And then I was like, well, I'm going to be a farmer. So <laughs> we really were interested in um, providing more of a whole diet option to people, providing um, more calories <laughs> to people and, and raising animals for meat. With this farm in Amory came up for sale, uh, we visited and decided to move within the span of a few weeks. And we've been here ever since and now just focus on sheep and a few goats uh, and vegetables and now have two kids. The last five years have also kind of been a story of us working with some other mostly Latino immigrant farmers to try to uh, sell our produce and their produce. And um, this, yeah, so that's kind of been part of the story as well. We sell most of our produce through shared ground. I think what we're trying to do is basically the same. We're like leaving the farm less, which, you know, honestly is not like that huge of a difference. And we also have other folks living with us, so we have a bit of a quarantine crew. We've been pretty good at just kind of identifying the essentials. Yeah, are you offering this? Hi, Laura Vicks. Happy Monday. Bring us a You want a piece? <laughs> we have seen uh, somewhat of a surge in demand for local food just since the beginning of this pandemic and we've offered a couple deliveries into the city for that. For us it was nice because we had quite a bit of produce um, in our storage area that uh, we were ready to sell. Yeah and it has felt that's felt like a pretty um, abrupt change. There was a year or two of time where we were trying to offer monthly online orders at a pickup site in the cities um, and I always felt like I was really nagging people <laughs> a lot in order to get maybe just a dozen orders. Since the pandemic hit, uh, um, we put the word out on social media and have our order form open for like a day or two and we're full with the, as many deliveries as we can put together and, um, and deliver within a day. So, And honestly, I think a lot of the people who were vaguely supportive of what we do and maybe would support us occasionally. If they have the financial resources and stability right now to support local farmers, they're suddenly like, oh my gosh, I really need to do this because I don't want to go to the co-op more than I need to. And I um, and I suddenly kind of realize how important a shorter supply chain is. And I'm thinking about how many people touched my food. But thinking about how that's gonna play out into the future is just a lot of uncertainty for us. It seemed like everyone's really busy trying to figure out this new normal. In terms of equipment sharing, going in on buying stuff together, um, helping on projects when that comes up. I think that's continued and certainly our communication between farms has continued. Um, there's obviously less like physical interaction in that way, but um, I think it's been really nice being in a community where folks do have sort of that culture established. If we want like local food systems to exist, we need to support them now. If we, uh, you have um, like 
supply chains breaking down in the future, which makes it harder to import food. Um, you need local farms to exist in the first place to be able to fill those gaps. So every time you spend a dollar, you're basically voting for the world you want to see. Yeah, and I think, you know, if people feel like they have the the time and energy really looking into supporting organizations that are working for farm worker rights um, and working on farm worker conditions. It's really important to be lifting up those essential workers too and, and advocating for a more just system. But we also need farmers. If you ever thought about being a farmer, here's a really good time to do it because as Klaus was saying, like when we witness supply chains starting to break down and we know that this is not going to be the only time this happens, that this it's, there's a very great possibility that this is going to happen more often in the future. Just as we're seeing with medical um, protective gear, a crisis hits and you can't just suddenly retool all these factories or build more factories to make these supplies within the span of weeks. So those farmers aren't going to just appear on the land overnight. Why not? actually take the leap and grow food for people. It's not always easy financially, but um, you know, demand for food is not gonna go away, <laughs> so. A big reason that I got into farming was because I see the existing capitalist structure as totally unsustainable um, and fragile, and the need to build an alternative to that. And so with this, it's just like, yep, Two big things are connect with people who are already farming. We've had somebody um, kind of do an incubator uh, farm on our land before, and I know lots of other farmers do that kind of thing where they'd be willing to share space and provide um, land, tools, resources to people who want to farm. Well, there are a lot of barriers in place for anyone, but especially for people of color. Um, so I think connecting with other folks who are doing reparations-based uh, farming and work. We've been trying to connect with a group called Divine Natural Ancestry. Going and building community around agriculture, being willing to just go learn and to help. There's a lot going on and there's a lot to do. What do you hope the future looks like? My hopeful vision for our future and many and other people's future is to have more kind of communities of people who who share land and work together um, and can supply nutritious food locally um, with short supply chains and and directly to people. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs>